Like many schools of its era, Harry Kazarian Elementary off Chalkstone Avenue needs a lot more than a facelift. From the outside, the school looks like it was built in 1959. But it isn't until a visit inside that you truly appreciate the challenging conditions that teachers, staff, and 600 children face every day. Last August, just as school was beginning, heavy rains caused part of the building's flat roof to cave in. Water cascaded into room 204. Despite efforts to replace tiles and carpeting, there's been a persistent mold problem. You can see it in other parts of the building as well. It's been so bad that the veteran teacher in room 204, who's been at Kazarian for a dozen years, has had to take 16 sick days this year alone to fight multiple bouts of bronchitis. Every time she's come back, respiratory problems and exhaustion have returned as well. It has a, a, a tremendous effect on, on the morale and the climate, climate and culture of a building. Steve Smith is the outgoing president of the Providence Teachers Union and a former state representative. The union has filed a grievance over the conditions at Kazarian and is fighting to have the teacher's sick time reinstated for the days missed. Her allergist has called the teacher's classroom a toxic environment. There's certainly water issues, and it all starts with the roof. And when, when you have, you know, uh, a problem with water, it eventually finds its level, and, and then you have mold and, and uh, air quality problems. But it's not just the roof in 204. This brace surrounded by scaffolding greets everyone who uses the cafeteria, which doubles as a gym. It was installed three years ago to prop up the ceiling. At first, the kids thought it was meant for climbing, so officials put in padding and orange cones as a warning. If someone was blindfolded and they went to the, and, and you took off the blindfold and say, where, where are you? You would not say, <laughs> the first answer would not be a gymnasium. We have a pretty old building stock. The average age of our buildings are 58 years old. Joseph DePina took over as the Providence School Department's chief of administration five months ago and has been the point man on the problems at Kazarian. He says while the school department is addressing day-to-day -day problems, the city owns the buildings and is ultimately the landlord. We asked Depina about the scaffolding in the cafeteria. What did you think the first time you saw that? Um, it's, it's an eyesore. We agree. I don't think anyone who would see that would, would think otherwise. Um, it is a Band-Aid solution to what, what uh, amounts to a, what, what requires a more permanent solution. What is, that, what is that scaffolding doing? Uh, that is holding up a section of the roof. The permanent solution would cost half a million dollars and speaks to a larger issue of what conditions schools in Providence and across the state are in after the General Assembly passed a school construction moratorium in 2011. It eliminated a state reimbursement, making it financially attractive for local communities to invest in their facilities. The moratorium brought most construction and renovations to an abrupt halt. The first thing to go in budgets since I was a teacher, let alone union president, is the is maintenance. And as the buildings get older, the maintenance costs increase. And uh, this, is, this is a money problem. I know people don't sometimes want to hear that, but it's really a money problem. That's been particularly true in Providence, where the oldest building is the Broad Street School, dating to 1895. The new Providence Career and Technical Academy is the crown jewel of the district, opening just before the school construction moratorium. The department also overhauled Central High next door. Then the money dried up. That moratorium is scheduled to expire later this year, and Smith says the General Assembly should be wary of extending it. I think we have to look at the state construction fund that I, I believe has been frozen for you know, some time now. Uh, that was at least an avenue where the city and the state could uh, put money together. You know, we hear often t from the uh, commissioner and, and Ride that we have to have high expectations and high standards uh, for students. Well. We also have to have high expectations for the environments in which they go to learn. <laughs> and that you just, think that's been forgotten? Yes, in Providence. The Rhode Island Department of Education commissioned a study looking at the conditions of school facilities statewide. The picture is not pretty in Providence, which has three and a half million square feet of space to maintain 
every year. We assist the city by, and again, in identifying projects, we characterize them as warm, safe, and dry. Those are the most basic, that'll satisfy the most basic needs that the students we have. That they're in a warm facility, the boilers, heating systems work, um, they're safe, um, they have alarm systems and security systems which function, and they're dry, meaning we try to minimize or eliminate the roof leaks to, a, to a prevent water damage in the schools. So that's where, our, when you talk about triage, those are our most pressing needs in our schools. As of today, are most of your schools or all of your schools warm, safe, and dry? Or I would say areas? that that's an ongoing, I wouldn't say that as of today they're all there. We do have some schools that have some pressing issues. Warm, safe, and dry has been a challenge at Kazarian. A $1,500 air quality study recently completed for the district showed no mold problems, but indicated high levels of carbon dioxide in room 204, even when no one was in the room. The teacher has reported through her union that many of her students are lethargic and often fall asleep in class. The district's short-term solution? Crack a few windows. And she can't move to another classroom because the building is full. You have people that are dedicated. They come to work every day. They want to be in, they, they want to be in work and, and they want to do their job. So sometimes they, you know, they accept conditions that, you know, others, uh, you know, maybe teachers elsewhere would would uh, would not. So you think you've turned the, the corner going forward? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, how do you account for the fact that the teacher in that room has continued to have issues, bronchial I, issues? I, I don't know. I'm not a physician to know what her particular issues are. You have kids? Yes, I do. All right. Would you feel comfortable with your kids going to school at Kazarian? I would feel comfortable with my son going to any of the schools in Providence. That specific room that you looked in, where there have been high carbon dioxide levels that you have to crack the window, uh, uh, again, do other remediation. If your child was in that Again, if I classroom. knew that the school was doing its due diligence, if the district was doing its due diligence to ensure a safe community for the children there, I would send, feel comfortable sending my son there. It's a situation, Smith says, the city can't put off any longer. This shouldn't be looked at as pouring money into a situation. This is an investment. Why we wouldn't want to do this and do it well? Because the money you're spending and creating those environments you're talking about where you're going to retain the best teachers, children are going to want to be in that environment and thrive in that environment, you're going to save costs in years to come. And maybe avoid a situation like this one. In Providence, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.